All right, so I've got the carburetor body completely cleaned. I've got all the gasketed surfaces taken care of. So we are gonna put this little plug back in. And what I'm gonna do for that is I'm just gonna get that plug in place. And I just found a small socket that's gonna fit on here. And that plug doesn't have to be super tight in there. I'm just going to try to get that plug in place there and tap it down real gently to get it to stay. And then I was also taking a look at the gasket setup because this is the side that gets the that diaphragm. And I was looking at it, and I'll show you a little closer view here. On the exploded view, and I'll, I'll, I'll put up a picture of it, but on this side it gets the gasket first, then the diaphragm, then the plate. And on the other side, it gets the diaphragm first, then the gasket, and then the plate. So as we put it back together, I want to make sure that I get this in the right order so we don't have any issues with the thing running after I get it together. Um, so one of the other things I'm going to do here now, this is where the fuel inlet is with that filter. Okay. So I'm going to put this on here, and I just grabbed a punch. So I'm going to try to get that centered up on there. I'm going to use that punch to basically just push that push that screen filter down in place. Just like that. But at this point, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get the this is the old the old rocker arm and I'm going to pull the pin out of that. And I'm just going to install that into my new rocker arm here. And then I'm going to get my spring and put it back in place there. So the spring sits down in that pocket and then I've got the brand new needle to go down in there. Now the seat on these is not removable. The seat is actually, uh, is actually made into the carburetor body. So you want to float that piece in that pin at the end. And then we're going to just drop that down into that open hole and you want to make sure, and I think I got it upside down already. Sure do. Try this again. There we go. So that bump should be aiming down, and that should engage the top of that spring. And this is a little tedious to get together all at once, but there we go. So it's kind of sitting down in there. I'm going to make sure that spring sits in the pocket underneath that and then that pin comes across and that's pretty close to what it should look like i need to get that spring back in place there we go like that so now i'm going to take my small set screw and push put that back down in there we'll tighten that set screw down you probably can't see with my fingers in the way but that's okay Okay, so when that's in there properly, when this gets pushed down, it should lever up and down on that needle. And so then when we put this back together, this piece right here, there's actually a small tab that sticks down. You can see it in the video there that needs to get hooked down into that little fork right there. And I noticed on the old one, it doesn't even have that hook on there. So I don't know if they changed designs on that. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but it doesn't even have that hook on there. It looks like it's just a button to push down. So I don't know if maybe somebody got the wrong rebuild kit or maybe that was the way it was originally. I don't know if this, this saw has been rebuilt before. If you guys know, leave a comment down there. Let me know. I have no idea, but this, the rebuild kit that I got here was uh, just off of Amazon. And it was just a cheap rebuild kit, so I'm hoping that it works out all right. But uh, so now we've got our needle and seat in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our gasket back on here. And I need to make sure I orient this gasket the right way to get it back on here so it lines up with all the holes. Oops. So 
So you just need to need to pay attention to the set pins here and the holes that are in there to make sure you get your pieces back together correctly. So now this diaphragm goes back on. We need to make sure that gets hooked hooked into that piece down there. There it's hooked in. We'll set that on gently. And then your cover plate goes right back over that. And then we'll put our screws back into that cover plate. Did I get the right ones? Nope. They're the ones over here. The nice thing is on these carburetors, the screws are different for the different sides. So you can't really get the wrong screws in the wrong place on it. It's kind of a process of elimination. But if you look at the exploded view uh, in the diagram, you can also figure out which screws go into which areas. Now, remember when you're putting these screws back in, this is not a situation where you need to over tighten these because these are tiny little screws. That gasket is not very thick. You don't want to bear down on these. This is just a small carburetor. It's not like this is a, oh, lost it. I have another one right here. You don't want to bear down on these. You pretty much just want them snugged up. So. And then that side's complete. We'll go around the other side here. And for my diagram there, it showed that the, the, the diaphragm on this one goes on first. We need to make sure it's in the right location. This side doesn't have set pins like the other side did. So now we put our gasket on top of that. The pins on this one are actually on our plate itself. There we go. You can see there's the two pins. We'll focus on there. And those go on there. So we need to make sure all that's lined up. And it probably would have been helpful if I had just put it on the, on the plate first. But you want all those pieces to line up. There we go. And that, that gas is fairly tight on there. So there's our diaphragm. And then this goes back together like that. And then we'll put our screws in here. Now after I'm done with this part of it, uh, the only thing left to do is to get those two... Uh, those two mixture screws back in, uh, those are idle mixture screws. One is for the high side, one is for the low side. And what that means is when the chainsaw is running at idle and just off of idle, that's gonna be your low side for this carburetor. So if it's not idling right, or you notice that it's burning a lot of, lot of uh, extra fuel and possibly smoking or, the saw is getting hot or something like that, you can adjust either lean or rich mixture based on idle or the other end is the high end, which is wide open throttle. And so I did take a look at the specs for this and the factory specs on that are, I actually wrote them down right here so you can see them. Uh, low side gets one to one and a quarter turns. And what that means is here's the low side one i'm putting that in so what you want to do to set that properly is take your screwdriver and turn that screw in oh, hope that's uh, you can see a little better you want to turn that screw in until it bottoms out now don't crank down on it you basically just want to go until it seats so it's just it just snugs up so this is the low side. There's an L right there that you can see. And that says one to one and a quarter turns. So I always try to count it by half. There's half a turn. There's one turn. So I'm just going to leave it right at one. I'm going to set it, set it to that one. If we need to adjust it out a little bit more once it's running, we can do that. Same thing for the high side. You take it all the way down until it's seated. 
and then we're going to come out three quarters of a turn for that one. And we'll start it there. If the saw doesn't run right, we can open them up a little bit more. Um, it's always better for the saw to run a little bit rich rather than lean. Uh, if you run it lean, you take the chance of actually burning holes in the piston and crazy things like that. So I'm going to go, there is half a turn, three quarter. So I'm going to leave those set. That's the factory setting for that uh, with those specs. So at this point, we're going to double check this carburetor. Make sure that everything is clean on it, ready to go. And I'm going to use these other two gaskets, the new gaskets, to put it back onto the saw. And we'll get our connections hooked back up and hopefully fire this thing up and it runs decent. All right, so we've got our new gaskets here. Be careful pushing those down so you don't rip them. So there's the lower gasket. When you put your carburetor back on there, you have to make sure that your throttle connection is hooked up on there like that before you start that down over the studs. Because if you don't do that, the thing's not going to want to, like you're not going to be able to get it hooked up there. So it sits down like that. Make sure to test your throttle that it works. And I'm going to hook up my tubes here. Also, while you're doing this, check your fuel line tubes, check your vent tube there, because these two tubes, if they start to get brittle, they can actually crack, and this will not draw fuel up from the tank if there's a crack in here. This has to be sealed in order to work properly. So we'll get this other gasket down on there in place. And then I've got my upper plate here. Now the upper plate, remember, has your choke rod on it. So this choke rod needs to be hooked back in to the choke like that before you set this back on. So I'm going to slide this back down in place. Now you may have to actually pull the trigger on here because this right here, this screw, I don't know if you can see it in the video easily, that screw is your idle screw. And if you don't pull the throttle wide open as you drop that down, it's not going to want to sit back down in place, right? And it can pinch the throttle. So make sure that your throttle works once you get that thing back down in place. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put my carburetor plate nuts back on there. I like to keep the choke closed while I'm doing this in case you happen to drop one of these. It doesn't go down in there. Um, you, don't, you don't want parts going down into your engine. That'd be a bad thing. So then once I get these tightened up, we make sure we put our screw back in down here. And then we're going to put our air filter back on, put our cover back on top of there. And hopefully at this point, uh, you've got no pieces left on the table and it goes back together for you. But uh, we're going to go out and we're going to fire this up and we're going to check and see if it idles right. If it does not, we can start adjusting those two screws on the side of it. Now, having gone through all this, you may have to actually adjust your idle screw as well to get it to run. Um, it just depends on how bad your carburetor was to begin with. So we will check that out here in a minute. Okay, so we've got everything back together now. We're going to try to fire this thing up and uh, see what it does. So I was just setting the idle there. Um, what we're going to do, 
I'm gonna get that saw warmed up. I'm gonna cut a little bit of wood with it and see what it's acting like. See, see if it's gonna fire up and run um, after I've cut it and warmed up the saw. So I will, uh, I will do a, a quick video here as soon as I've got this warmed up and finish it out to show you guys the difference. So usually by this point, I've got it good and warmed up now. Usually by this point, the saw doesn't want to fire back up nicely or it's trying to stall out while I'm running it. So I'm going to check it here without even pulling the throttle trigger on it to see what it does.